Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord good? Bless you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And they're glad your name's in that roll this evening. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're going to keep it off church rolls, sausage rolls, not anything else. As long as you're on that roll. Glory to God. Folks, I want to speak this evening about being together. There's nothing like being together. Being together in the Lord's name. Being together in the spirit of the Lord. Being together just in a oneness of heart. Being together in the unity and the brotherhood of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something wonderful about being together. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the wee short Psalm of Psalm 133 just for a moment, please. Psalm 133. Just your turn there. Let's just bow our heads again. I'll pray. You turn you find your scriptures. Bless you, Lord, this evening. Yes. Father, thank you. We're found here once again in your house. Yes. And Lord, as we've already been praying, we thank you for what's went forward already this morning. And Lord, we come to you again this evening for the nighttime blessing. Lord, we just come and we ask, oh God, that you would move from seat to seat here this evening. Lord, we are a needy people. We need you, Lord. There's no, we, we make no bones about that. We need you, Lord, every single day. And Father, we thank you as we've already heard from our brother earlier on. You never leave us and you never forsake us. So Lord, I pray you'd move from seat to seat here. Lord, for those who are watching at home, pray, Father, they would know the blessing as well. And that, Lord, we know that your blessings, they make rich. And they add no sorrow with it. So, Lord, make rich this evening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Psalm 133. We'll read the three verses. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's, Aaron's beard, and went into the skirts of his garments. As the Jew of Hermon... And as the Jew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. We know the Lord will bless the reading of his word. You know, I love it whenever you see the word behold in the scriptures. When you see the word verily, you usually find it comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. When you see the word yea coming, Y-E-A, it's usually God, the Father speaking. But you know, when you see behold, most times you'll find it's the Holy Spirit that's speaking. And the Holy Spirit is speaking here in this song. Yes, we know it's a song of degrees uh, by David. We spoke on that before. What is a song of degrees? What is that? That is for those when they're making their way back home to Jerusalem, climbing the mountains, they're making their way back home again. As they're, as they're on the ascent, they began to sing these wonderful, wonderful songs. And you'll see that these are the last couple Psalm 133 and Psalm 134. And if you go back over a couple of pages, you'll find that they are the songs of degrees. You know, this beautiful psalm tells us again and again the blessedness of unity. Folks, I want to tell you something. that Unity is the fuel that any church or fellowship or assembly, whatever, which way you want to call it, that's the fuel that we run on. When we run out of unity, we run out of blessing. When we run out of unity, we might as well not have meetings at all. We might as well shut the door and turn the lights off. Now, I don't mean to say that we have to have unity at any cost. That also brings in problems. But unity is definitely the fellowship, is definitely the fuel for the fellowship. And folks, as you're praying for the assembly here, it's not that we're, we're in trouble because usually when people are pre preaching about unity, there's problems in the house. There's no problems here. Amen. Do you hear that, devil? There's no problems here. Now, I know he could bring someone, he could find someone. He's, not, he's, he's always busy at that, but there's no problems here. Folks, we've, we've learned well enough that when we have issues with one another, go and be brotherly about it. Sit down and say to your brother, brother, I think we've got an issue. Listen, it's hard. It's like grabbing, it's like grabbing thorns and thistles and old nettles. But sure, those are the things that came forth in the ground when sin came into the garden. Isn't that right? And sometimes we have to deal with these things. It's not nice, you know. But no, folks, we need to be praying for unity. Unity in the leadership. Unity even within the singers as well too. And we all love each other, praise God. And we're not trying to do anyone or any of those. Pray for the teens that there's unity as well there too. But pray that there's unity. But the greatest unity of all, that we would be in union with the Father. That this assembly here would be in union with heaven. That we could truly, that what could be said about us is that we are a true, true house of the Lord. A true embassy of heaven. Sticking to the word of God and preaching the word of God. When there's no unity, there's no blessing. When there's no unity, there's no revival. But the Lord longs for us to be together. Time and time throughout scripture we are told to come together. 
And we're told how we should be whenever we do come together. And he shows us the great blessings of us gathering together. You know, I know there's those of us who are watching online, and God bless you. But we'd rather you were here. Now, I know because of sickness and circumstances, you can't be with us. Some even aren't, believing, aren't even in the country, they're in other places. And we well, thank God that we can do these things. But you know, there's nothing like being together in the fellowship one with another. Why? Because we can build each other up. We can encourage each other along the way. And as I said to you there a couple of Sundays ago, and I mean that every time we come here Sunday after Sunday, when I look around and see who's here, I thank God. I thank God you're here this season again. Why? Because you're telling us, not only you're telling me, but you're telling us and you're telling the devil, you're telling the hosts of heaven, you're saying to the Lord, I want to be in your house. I want to be in fellowship with my brothers and sisters sitting beside me. I want, to be in the, I want to be in the place of the blessing. Lord, make this place a blessing to your people. And hallelujah, make it a blessing even to those who don't know you yet as their Savior. Make this place, as it were, a Bethlehem. Make it a, a wonderful place where people can be born anew of Christ. Hallelujah. Time and time, as I say, throughout Scripture, we're told to come together and how we should come together and why we should come together. You know, every time I think of a gathering together, I think of that wonderful part of the psalm too. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The blessing together. Whenever we come together, so there's a blessing. This is what the blessing is for. Where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. And yes, folks, we want to see bigger numbers. Yes, we want to see bigger crowds. But folks, I would rather have it a small number of people with the same attitude and the same heart. We want to be in your presence, oh God. We don't want to be seen of the cameras. We don't want to be seen of other people. But it's just us, that wonderful, sweet fellowship with the Lord. And the Lord even says, if there's two or three gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You know, when Paul and Silas were in, the, in that jail all those years ago, singing the songs of Zion, there was one there with them. We think of the three Protestant boys, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who wouldn't bow their knee. They were cast into the fiery furnace. There was another one there. There was a fourth man in the fire. Well, the two are there, or oh, the three are there. He's there as well too. That's Folks, right. I think that's wonderful. And for you, you know, for, for uh, the married couples in the church, when it's the husband and the wife, there's the two, and the Lord. Yeah. That's how we can have blessed times even as well too at home. Glory to God. And then, of course, we have the, the blessing of the Lord's work together. For we are laborers together with God. Just think about that for a moment. Laborers together with God. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, I would tell the ones, the, the guys I'm serving with here, I count it an honor and a privilege and a delight to serve with them. Oh. <laughs> That's the truth. Who said this? Up? <laughs> but it's the truth. I count it an honour and a privilege and a pleasure to serve with the guys who are here. It is a blessing. But think about that, folks. We are labourers together with God. I know we call ourselves servants, but of course the Lord Jesus, he, he almost rebukes his, his disciples for saying, he says, no, a servant doesn't know what his master. You're my friend. Friends of the Lord and friends of God. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. There are so many blessings uh, whenever we come together. We, when we're being together, when we're serving together. And these are just a couple of wee things this evening that I want us to think about. Three little simple, simple things to bless you. Because I wonder how, how am I going to close November? Because of course we're coming into December next, next week. And then of course we're going to speak about Christmas. We don't speak about any other time of the year. Let's talk about the Lord coming into the world. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Amen. Folks, we couldn't preach anything better than that, you know, for the whole of the next month. So how do we, how do we finish this word of the year? Well, you know, three simple things for each of us that are serving together to consider briefly this evening with the Lord's help about being together. Because we're working together shoulder to shoulder at the spiritual ply, pushing on for the Lord. And the first one is this. We're walking together in love. I think that's beautiful, you know. Walking together in love. Secondly, we're working together by example and effort. We're striving together for the faith and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not one person here 
is here to try and make a name for themselves. We've given up on that, you know. We've done that when we're in the world trying to make names for ourselves. But we're working together by example and effort. And thirdly, we're worshipping together in joy. Now, the prophet Amos, powerful little book. I love it. I can't understand why at times we call them the minor prophets, because there's nothing minor about them. Some of the things that these men tell us are unbelievable. But Amos 3 and verse 3 asks a question, and it's a powerful question. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Here we're back into the whole unity of the thing, back into the, the, the togetherness. And the fact of the matter is the answer is no. Or how can they even try to walk together without them being in agreement? They can't simply do that. And folks, they'll walk on a journey, and their journey will be fraught with what? With quarreling and disagreements along the way. And if they're trying to, 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 to journey like that, there wouldn't be one of us would want to be part of that journey. But you know, 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 simply tells us this, that we have been brought into a reckon, the gospel of reconciliation with Christ. What a thought. We have been brought into reconciliation. So we're supposed to be in unity anyway in the first place. And we should be striving for unity at all, at all times. We should be at peace. Why? Because we're at peace with the Prince of Peace. He has brought us into this wonderful, wonderful ministry of reconciliation. We have peace with God. What a thought. <laughs> Folks, we can put our heads here, pillows, can't we? Evening after mm -hmm. evening. No matter what we've had to face throughout the day, we can shut our eyes off. I know Pastor Bill said this morning, it's like a circus sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know that? You know, when well, that happens to me, I just rebuke it in Jesus' name. Amen. I tell my mind to shut up. <laughs> no, don't tell yourself to shut up, you know. And there's what times even as well too, as you get a bit older and you have the old restless legs, and you tell your legs to lie still. <laughs> lie still. And they know that lie still in the name of Jesus. Lie still. And he gives you that peace even in the nighttime as well too. Praise the Lord. I know people look at you and go, speak it out, folks. Speak it out. Bring it before the Lord in prayer. Glory to God. But we can put our head on the pillow of the evening and we can sing with gusto, whatever my lot. That has taught me to say it as well. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. We've got peace with God. And folks, not only that, because we've got peace with God, and we're walking with the Prince of Peace, and because we are serving the Prince of Peace, we can be at peace with all men. I think about that for a moment as well too. There's some people you couldn't get on with, even if you tried. But here it is, from the Word of God. We can still get up. We can love them. We can be at peace with them. It's hard. It's difficult. It's woo -woo. And like I know you just have to deal with me. <laughs> oh my Lord. God bless you. But it's true folks. We can be at peace with all men. And we can know peace in every circumstance that we have. And folks we don't want to come to the agreement when we're coming to this moving and walking together. Walking together in love. We don't need to agree in everything. See, that's where people get it wrong. Some people are off the idea that if you disagree with one thing that I say, well then we can't be in agreement with each other. That's a lot of nonsense, you know. There are plenty of Christians who I know and the class as dear, dear friends. And there are many things that we would differ about in the scriptures. Now there are things, well, there are things that we certainly can't disagree on. There's, there's dogma, which is just the truth of the scriptures, the absolute truths. And then there's doctrine. And we can all differ on our doctrine. You know, but the thing about it is this, we don't need to be agreeing on absolutely everything. The things we need to be agreeing on is, number one, the blood. Amen. That Christ is the only way. That he is God, that he's the son of God, that he's the son of man, that he is the, the lamb of God. He's all of those things. Praise you, Lord. But we don't need to agree on absolutely everything. In fact, if I sat down with each of us, and we're three, just our wee company that's here tonight, and we're talking about end times, I would say that some of the things that you agree with will be very, very different to the things that I agree with. But that doesn't mean to say we fall out and run and fight and say, oh, that one there. There was a time whenever I was young and foolish, I might have been like that. And when they argued my case, in fact, Len used to say to me, I hope we never get asked out to anybody's house ever again for tea. <laughs> you know, I can remember I was only saved a wee while. And I say this to them, a shame, you know, but you learn. You do, you learn. When you first get saved, you know it all. You do, because you've read Genesis and part of Revelation, you've got it all together. <laughs> oh my. We're in a man of woman's house. And funny, we've never gone a bit of back, shall we? No, let's go, no. And that's our prize. Anyway, 
They were, they were there and were discussing about Bible translations. And I was going through one of those times where it's the King James only. <laughs> and it can be nothing else but the King James. It's the 1611 authorised version and none other. Hey folks, I'm still a wee bit like that, you know. But a wee bit more open. You learn a wee bit. Anyway, I went toe to toe with a man. Right? I mean, you this for a poor gig. This man was saved a long, long time. And turned out that he was a Bible translator. <laughs> oh, I can pick with fights, can't I? No, what? No, bring it into the Oh, a Bible translator. Anyway, the man of the house, he said to me that night, he says, um, and he says, you're ballsy, I'll give you that. Aye, mm-hmm. well, because he could have said a whole lot worse. And Lynn was mortified. He could take you nowhere. That's the truth. For a while, he could take me nowhere. I'm surprised sometimes where I've ended up in ministry and life. Glory to God. The Lord has a real sense of humor. Folks, every time I'm going to look around, if the Lord would use me, he'll use anybody. Just make yourself available. Hallelujah. And I'm not putting myself down by saying that, because boy, I know me. Oh, oh when, we love, when we walk in love, we walk in the love of the Lord. We go back to that verse again, Amos 3 and 3. And this is where I've changed. This is what the New Living Translation says. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? See, that's what it's all about. It's all about the direction you're going in. It's not about arguing about what we're doing along the way. It's the direction in which we're going in. We need to be going, pre- where are we going? We're he- heaven bound, are we not? And our idea is this, let's bring as many people along with us as we possibly can. Amen. That's what it's about. And of course the NIV says, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so, walking together in love. You know what it reminds me, every time I think of walking together, it reminds me of an old Walt Mills song. If you've never heard of Walt Mills, check him out on Apple Music, he's brilliant. He used to do a lot of singing for the swaggers. He's now away home to heaven. But one of my favorites that he sings is this. Well, I'm on the way to heaven. Yeah. And the journey gets sweeter every day. And so it does, folks. Every day you get up and you're walking with the Lord. I'm walking with the saints here. It does. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. I have some enough. I don't even sing that anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's the truth. Isn't it, isn't, it, isn't it wonderful? When you're walking in love, walking in the unity, you've got that togetherness with the Lord and with God's people. Oh, there's nothing like it, you know. When we walk in love, no matter the situation, we're like the two on the road to Emmaus, like uh, that we're told about in Luke 24. Their heads might have been bowed down, I believe it's a husband and wife, and they're making their way back to their home in Emmaus, and they're heartbroken. Folks, the Lord comes along, and he lifts their head, as only he can, folks. And in one of their testimony, Luke 24 and 32, it says this, Did not our hearts burn within us? While he walked, while he talked to us on the road, and then while he opened to us the scriptures. You know, husbands and wives go through a lot, you know. And if they're walking together, and the Lord with them as well too, your hearts will burn like that as well too, because he's the three-way cord. You're brought together, and he's the, the three-way cord, which is hard to be broken. You know, whenever you think of that resurrection morning, he'd seen Mary in the garden. And boy, she left. She went in broken. She went out skipping. Yes. Glory to God. They were trailing their knuckles, as it were, along the road of the enemy. You could see them yet. But then they ran the whole way back. Seven miles they run. Boy, they were thick. Seven miles they run their way back to tell that the Lord has risen. He showed himself alive. Glory to God. Yes, Walking in that wonderful, wonderful unity. This is, brethren, the together in unity. The outpouring of the blessing of God. That sweet fellowship. Like what we've read, like the oil on the beard of Aaron, the sweet aroma of heaven because of this beautiful unity the peace of it, the blessing of it, and folks shouldn't we strive for not only for not only for the truth but also for the blessedness of unity as well, and of course we have the working together, and what are we doing we're, 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 we're working, working together an example and an effort, we're an example to one another aren't we, mm-hmm. and folks you can be a good example but we can also be bad examples as well too so let's try and be good examples. We're laborers in this part of the vineyard. This is where God has called us for such a time as this. We're all here. We're not here by accident. We didn't all arrive here this season, but well, because well, we thought it might be a good idea. God has brought you here. The Holy Spirit has led you here. And even if you're part of the church here, God has led you here for, for such a time as this. And you know, we've all got different jobs to be doing. You know, there's some in the church, and what are they doing? They're plowing the ground. Some are coming behind and they're planting, they're, they're sowing the seed. 
some are reaping. And the ones even come behind the reapers are the gleaners. Folks, I'd love to be a reaper. You said you're like the grim reaper, look at you. <laughs> but I'd love to be a reaper. I would love, truly love to be a reaper. I'd love to be one of those boys that could say, well, you know, we had meetings and there was 40 saved. There was this amount saved or that amount saved or the other amount saved. That would thrill my heart more than anything else, you know. But honestly, I feel at times that I'm the one that comes in and breaks up the ground. And there's others, of course, I believe I'm a sower because we're preaching the word of God as well too. But more often than not, even here as the assembly, we've seen it ourselves. We've put on big missions. And other places have got the blessing. Thank God they've got the blessing. Thank God there were souls saved and all, all, all the missions that we've put on in the past. But folks, when the great was here, great if the addition was here, great if the multiplication was here, I guess it was great to be speaking to people on phones and say, listen, we brought some money up from such and such a place on their way down the country and three or four get saved. And there was other places, whenever we had Donny here, people come up from Dublin. They never heard the word of God before they left here, saved. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thought. But you know, folks, whenever you think of it, I love to be, I love to be asked those questions that like Ruth was asked. But she brought home her wee bit of harvest. And Ruth 2 and 19, when her mother-in-law Naomi said to her, where hast thou gleaned today? And where wrought thou? Where have you been working? Blessed is he that did take knowledge of thee. Wouldn't it be wonderful, folks, that of this year that we're coming into in 2024, that the Lord really took knowledge of our wee assembly here. That when people were asking us about what was going on, and people being saved, and a wonderful harvest coming in, that they will be asking the same question. Where hast thou gleaned today? You know, when I even stopped, when I was putting writing this down on paper there the other day, I thought to myself, you know, here's the question for me. Tom, where have you been working? Where have you been cleaning today? Where have you, have you, have you done anything for the Lord? You know, we can't just sit there and look at the heavens and say, well, we want to put this together for your people on Sunday. No, no, no. What have you been doing? What have you been actively doing to see souls saved and add to the kingdom of God? Folks, only we can ask that ourselves. But what I think is wonderful here, whenever she continues on, says, blessed is he. That takes knowledge of you. The Lord takes knowledge of you in his service. And praise the Lord. We have found one so wonderful. We find such wonderful favor with him. Favor in so great a salvation. Favor in the anointing which breaks the yokes. And I love the same story, Ruth 2 and 19. It says, so she gleaned in the field until even. Folks, I hope and pray that God gives me the strength and the health to do that, to glean in his field until I'm an old, 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 old man. Or until he comes back again and takes his waiting people home. Because folks, we look at the world today, he's coming back. I don't need to tell you that. We can almost hear his footfall on the other side of the door. It's even tied in the world today, is it not? There's a darkness coming, folks. Whenever we will not be able to work anymore, we need to look, look, look at the world today. But saints, as we look at the world and then we can sit and we can shake our heads and we can talk, you know, that's not what we should be doing. We should be looking to the fields. They're waiting right on the harvest. But sadly, the laborers are few. This is where we need to be working together. You know, that was much of talks about with that last week. That was much of God, isn't it? And that's the truth, you know. May our example to all be godly. When they recognize that it's not about earthly things here, it's about heavenly things. May our efforts be for Christ and for him alone, our heavenly Boaz, our heavenly kinsman, redeemer, hallelujah. In these final days of grace and in fact, in these final hours of this day, Lord, help us to bring in the harvest. And Lord, send us in laborers, no matter how few they may be. But don't do this for ourselves. We do all these things when we're working together as a service with the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, I've seen a t-shirt one time. I would love to have got it in my size, but I'm one of those sizes that's a bit awkward. I'll say no more. <laughs> it says, I'll say this on. He died for me. I live for him. Amen. Folks, that may that be our epitaph. He died for me. We'll live for him. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. What a blessed thought. Working together with the saints. Working together with the Savior. Finally. Worshiping together in joy. Folks, I love singing. I can't really sing that well. I can carry a tune. You know what I mean? There's other people I know that can really sing. And to be honest with you, I'm not jealous. Well, I suppose I could be. A wee bit, you know. But there's just some people that can really, really, really sing. And you just go, see if I had that, I would use that for the Lord. 
Mm -hmm. You know, seriously, I would. But the Lord uses, <laughs> when he looks at it's little as much when God's in it, the Lord uses whatever talent I have. But you know, there's something about worshiping together. There's a joy when you're worshiping the Lord. There's a joy that comes. And folks, I, you know, I, I'm maybe a bit sentimental at times, you know, but there's times whenever I listen to the old hymns. And if you look at me closely, you may see a tear running down my face. It's not a tear of sadness, you know. It's a tear of joy. I, I, you, you, you can wait for joy, you know. Whenever you listen to some of the words of those powerful old hymns, when they really begin to speak to your, speak to your mind. So listen, it's not about us. It's about us deep crying out to deep. It's, it's something from deep inside saying to the Lord, Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for lifting me out of the muck and the mire. Thank you, Lord, for turning my life right around and, and making something off me. He stooped down the left so little. Oh, hallelujah. But what a wonderful thought. I love worship. Especially this collective worship. When we come together and we can sing. And we can really praise the Lord. Now you know me folks. It's, I believe the word is the most precious thing. Because I believe that we're living in a, in a day. Where there's, there could be there's such a dearth of the word. But we can't forget about the worship neither. We need to the cultivate worship. Here in our assembly. But also here in our lives as well too. And the Lord is seeking worshippers. Who will worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. And I love the example of John, uh, the revelator in Revelation 1 and verse 10. It says this, that I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He was in a place where the Lord could come and commune with him. But he was also in a place where he could really worship the Lord. And every Lord's day, that's my desire, that I would be in the spirit on the Lord's day. That I would be able to praise the Lord in spirit and so also and in truth. There's a joy of worshipping the Lord. With our backs to the world. It's funny when you think even a high church is done. We've got our backs to the front door. And we're looking off onto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. We've got our backs to the world as it were. We've turned our back to this, the world and its systems. And with our hearts we're turned from the wiles of Satan. You know, folks, you see, before I was saved, you know me, I loved a bit of music. I still love music, but I loved it loud, really, really loud. Growing up, I listened to all manner of heavy metal and punk music and rock music. The louder, the nastier, the better. I absolutely loved it because it seemed to, it seemed to, it seemed to speak to me in some sort of way. And you know, I used to, I used to hate tapes in the house because... But my dad had a found them in the world. In fact, the world that did it, but I brought out, I sneaked in tapes belonging to my mate one time. I still haven't paid them back, but I don't think he's one. It's 30 odd years ago now. <laughs> if you're watching, sorry, man, you're still not getting the money from him. But this guy left me a couple of tapes, and it was the Sex Pistols. And I thought, I'll get them now, listen to them upstairs with my earphones in, you know, and nobody will be any the wiser. So I snuck in through the door, and I had this big square box in my pocket. And then you pass my dad anyway. He says, Here, here you be now. You got your pocket. Mm -hmm. You never mind what I have in my pocket. And then often I'll come up and look at that big packet of fakes. You know, like Barbie Red or something. And he said to me, here, I'll be your pockets. And I said, here we go. So I emptied my pocket so and he says, there, there you go. That's what it is. And he looked at it. Are you bringing that muck in the R-House floor? For a play for that. Yeah. You're bringing that muck in the R-House floor. And he says, well, it's not mine. That's my mates. He says, I should have a wee listen to it. Ready? He says, I'll see him yet. Open the glass front of the fire. And the one. Door closed. He says, you can tell your mate around the fire. I said, I'll get beat up for this. Leo, he says. Leo, you just tell your mate I put them. Have you got a problem? Come and see me. All right, okay. Big man, what do you think? So I said, my mate's mouth. So he says, well, you listen to him tape. Oh, I. Oh, great. It was hot stuff. What? Powerful, all together. Never heard the leg of my life, you know what I mean? They were roaring, you know. So you come back to me, my lady says, You finish them tapes. I get them round you. I get them round you. You ask for the web. And so the only really right fit place for them. The fire, you know. But folks, whenever you come into contact with the Lord Jesus and He saved your soul, 
And you begin to listen to the songs of Zion. Oh, hallelujah. But they give you that dance. You know, when people call it the Pentecostal two-step, it's not that at all. It's just that believer's joy. And you feel like a bounce coming on, glory to God. And you feel like a Jericho march coming on, don't you? And you feel a shout coming on, hallelujah, in the camp. It does something within you. That worship, oh, hallelujah. You turn your back on the old ways. You said, I've decided to follow Jesus. You're looking off all the Jesus and bow our knee and looking heavenward, saying like the angels in his presence, holy, holy, holy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were created. The same with gusto. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me. And thou, O Lord, art worthy. And oh, what joy fills his soul. You know, when we lift our hands and our hearts and our voices and want to praise him, he's worthy of all of our praise. Amen. When we worship him in joy, there's a wonderful joy unspeakable. Oh, hallelujah. Folks, as we enter into our, our Christmas season, just be blessed. Be blessed and tell all about the Lord Jesus. And you know what's of all but sadly so commercialized? I don't think we'll ever get it back. I think that's long, long gone. The world has, has destroyed it. You know, we know the true story behind it. You know, he came into the world to save sinners. Right. Even the chief of sinners, Paul called himself that. I can remember a man very dear to me saying to me, you know, well, if he could save the chief of sinners, if Paul called him that, because he can save anybody. Hallelujah. He can save to the uttermost, and he can save to the guttermost. Let's just bow our heads, folks. Praise we bless you, Lord, this evening. Father, our desire more than anything else is that people will be saved because of the testimony of this assembly here at the corner of this road, on the Crumlin Road of Belfast. Lord, I don't need to tell you where it is. You know exactly where it is. And Father, we thank you for all the years that it has been here. But thank you, Lord, for all the years that you have used it for your honour and for your glory and for your praise. And Lord, we look to you again as we finish off a year. We're only a few weeks away from the close of this year. And we look back and we say thank you, O God, for everything that you have done for us thus far. And Lord, in this month that we're entering into, this season of, 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 of Christmas time, Lord, I pray that we would see souls saved in the month ahead. Lord, I pray we'll even see family members saved as well. That they would, that even Christmas cards with verses of scripture would speak to their hearts and, and speak to their so Lord, use whatever it is. Because Lord, we know that your word will not return unto you void. So Father, I pray that you would speak over this next month, O oh God. And we will be careful to give you all the glory. Lord, I pray you would bless our hands and everything that we're trying to do. And the, all the outreaches that we have here within the church. Even, Lord, the one that we will go out into the nursing home then at Castle. Lord, I pray you'd bless it as well, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray you would use our songs and use our lips. And Lord, may they see something in us. May they see Christ in us. The hope of glory. Even when the kids are in and, and later on in the month, oh God. As well too, Lord, when their parents are here. But Lord, that they will see in us something that's missing in them. And Lord, I pray that even before that day would, call, would pass into eternity. That souls would be saved and added to the kingdom of God. Lord, we just we pray, Lord, for our assembly. That Lord, that we would indeed walk together in love. Thank you, Lord, for all the, all the people who come here. Every home represented, oh God. Bless them. And Lord, bless their homes. Lord, bless them financially. Bless them spiritually. Bless them mentally. Bless them in every way, physically, oh God. And Father, may they all know household salvation. May we worship and joy, Lord. And may we work together with that, that wonderful effort that can only come from you, Lord. Because we know that we're only custodians here. We're only here for, for a little while, oh God. But cause us to be busy in the vineyard. And Father, I pray that when the harvest time comes, oh Lord, I pray that even when we come to this new year, oh God, Father, our, the one thing I'd love to see, I'd love to see discipleship courses where young believers are being discipled in the truths of God. Lord, you allow it. Have your way in this place. Have your way in my life, oh Lord. And have your way in the life of each and every single one of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. And Lord, we do. We thank you once again for today. Thank you, Lord, that we have, our time that's been here has been time well spent because we know yes, that we Lord. have met and we have communed with you. So, Lord, bless us as we part in Jesus' lovely name. Praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord.